Hey. Mitch, how's hey. everybody doing today? Fine. How are you? Doing great. And now is that a picture in the back in in your background? Or is that your yeah. actual truck with the Play-Doh in it? That's the truck with the Play-Doh. Wow, oh, is it really? That, that's a picture, yeah. <laughs> you got on here to show that off, didn't you? What's that? You just got on here so you could show that off to everybody, didn't you? Yeah, well, I had my I've been doing uh um videos on here with uh for my BNI group. So I had a different I had my logo on there and I'm like, ah, I'm gonna throw a fun picture on there once. Awesome. That so, sounds good. I'm gonna grab this call. Give me one second here. Oh yeah, just make sure you mute it if you would. Latasha, you there? Okay, I'm back. It's some spam. Sounds good. You'll be getting plenty of those. All right, guys. So it's uh, six fifty-six. So we will get started right about seven o'clock. <laughs> I'm here. Hey, there you are. There yeah, you everybody, are. Everybody's muted. Um, once we get going, just I make have to sure get a camera. you're not speaking. Just to mute your mic. We will have a Q and A uh, session later on. You guys are welcome to share video if you'd like. If not, that's fine. Um, Zoom has been getting kind of overloaded a bit with everybody working remotely. So if it gets kind of laggy, we might ask you to turn your video off just to make it a bit smoother for us. Sounds good. All right. All right. All right. And while we, for a minute or two, I'll wait everybody to check in. I'm going to step away for just one moment. I'll be right back. What's up, Miss Jones? <laughs> Not much, Tron. Hey, look at you. <laughs> John. Not much over here trying to weather this storm or whatever the heck we doing around here. <laughs> All right, and can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yep. Perfect. Awesome. Everybody doing all right today? Yep. Yeah. Cool, yeah. pretty good. Yes, sir. Hey, James, are you there? I am. Can you hear me, Lee? Yeah, I've got you. And I see you. All right. Glad to, glad to have you on here, man. Yeah, appreciate the invite. Appreciate you putting yeah. it together. Yeah, for sure. I think it'll be pretty good information. I mean, obviously, all this stuff, uh, this stuff is changing at such a rate. A week from now, we might have to redo it. But yeah, yeah, try and kind That's of base it on the information we have at the moment. Um, how many of you guys are in states or areas that are under shelter-in-place orders? Uh, we are. Uh, I'm I'm in one in San Diego. Okay, and then James, you got you're in California too. You guys yeah. still rolling? Yeah, yeah, it's still open. Yep, we're open. Andrew, we're that a background? Well, I'm assuming that's a background. Yeah, that's my yacht. You don't have a yacht? <laughs> no, I'm not on your level yet, man. There it is. They ordered us today, Friday. They're throwing a shelter in place. So, all right, all right. We got about one minute. We'll get rolling with this thing. Um, when we uh, do get started, you guys yeah, come, come around and watch. Your mic is muted until you're ready to say something. And uh, I believe it is seven o'clock now, so we'll kind of go ahead and, and get rolling. Like I said, if you guys uh, do have mic, if you've got your mic on mute, that'll be fantastic. Um, the format of this, we'll run through it. Turn off the, We're on mute. Turn off the map. What was that? Okay, there we go. All right, so the format of this, uh, we're going to do a brief overview of the virus slash disease as well as the implications uh, and then potential economic impact and timeline. That's going to be about 15 minutes of uh, information and then we'll do about 30 to 40 minutes as far as how it actually applies to junk removal. And then we'll wrap up with the question and answer session. I'll hang around just as long as, uh, as, long as needed. Obviously, it's a very fluid situation. Uh, a lot of this stuff can, can definitely change, but we're going to make, uh, you know, we're going to use the information we have at the moment to try and come up with the best decisions possible. One thing I do, I think a lot of this is definitely f is fear driven. Um, it, it, is, it is legitimate. I mean, this is a major problem that we're having. We have to deal with it in such a way that 
we keep uh, from un uh, overloading the hospital system as well as uh, keep the economy going. I'd hate to be a politician right now because that's very, very tough. But I do think the fear has made it a lot better or made it a lot worse, excuse me. Um, I always have liked the saying, you know, all, all we have to fear is fear itself. And then also understand people often make terrible decisions when afraid. So what I'm hoping is after we get out of this is we might be a little bit less afraid. I know some of us are definitely, you're still going to be concerned, but some people are very, very afraid of what might happen with their business. They built something up. They don't want to lose it. And I'm hoping this will help alleviate some of those concerns. And then obviously nothing is worse than the fear of the unknown. So I'm hoping to make the unknown known uh, during this presentation, or at least come part of the way. Like I said, it's changing. We might have to do this again next week, but at the moment we're going to do the best we can with the information we have. Uh, and again, this fire stuff will go through quickly. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but we go back to the whole fear thing is, you know, it, it, people act like this is the first time that's ever happened. And it's, and it's, it's not the case. And even recently we've, we have SARS as far back as 2002, 2003, didn't spread nearly as much, wasn't as big of a deal, but it was much more deadly when the people that did get it. Matter of fact, it was so deadly that it, that's the reason it didn't spread as much is people were sick. They weren't walking around, not realizing they weren't sick. H1N1, the uh, virus back in 2009, 60.8 million cases in the United States, 274,000 hospitalizations and 12,000 deaths. It's pretty daggone deadly. Um, and then the seasonal flu, 38 million to 54 million illnesses, 390,000 to 710,000 hospitalizations, 23,000 to 59,000 deaths. That's every single year. So this isn't completely out of the unordinary. This disease does spread exponentially and nobody has immunity to it. So that is why it's more dangerous but it's not like it's something that's brand new. This data, I, in all honesty, I have not looked to see what it is today, but as of yesterday, it was 44,000 cases in the United States, 544 deaths. Fatality rate, um, that's a 1.2% fatality rate. Uh, according to Dr. I'm gonna say Atwater, but I think I've got the pronunciation a little off there. He's the clinical director of infectious diseases at Johns Hopkins. He actually thinks once accurate testing has actually come in, because right now we don't know who all exactly has it, the actual rate will be closer to 0.5%. It is notable that is about five times more deadly than, excuse me, yeah, about five times more deadly than the flu, which is at 0.1%. So our trade-off here that we have to figure out is, uh, and there's gonna be, we gotta find what the right mix is, is we have to do what's best for people's health and what's best for the economy. Health experts want to lock down the country for up to three months or longer. Uh, main reason, one of the main reasons is lack of hospital capacity from hospital beds and ventilator shortages. Uh, flattening the curve is certainly important, but making sure the economy doesn't crash as well. One of the things, I don't know if you guys have noticed on these curves that they show is they very seldom actually show hospital capacity increasing. General Motors is making respirators now. Uh, so capitalism is already kicking in. I think they can find more hospital beds. Uh, you know, South Korea used dormitories. So it'll be interesting to see how we actually raise the, the capacity of our healthcare system as we go throughout this. And this thing right here, this was a piece of information that I was curious about. And I participated in a webinar that actually the guy from Johns Hopkins uh, put on uh, about a week ago. So information has changed since then. But this disease isn't likely, is not likely just to disappear. And I think we need to understand it's not like in a month from now or three months from now, this thing's just going to be gone. Most experts actually believe it's gonna be something that we're gonna deal with for probably years to come, just not on this level and we'll actually be ready for it. So a lot of people are actually looking at the lockdown as just a chance for us to prepare ourselves and get the testing and get the uh, hospital beds and get the ventilators to, to be able to withstand what might be able to come. Now, some people, that's not their opinion. Some people say that's kind of the, the goal here. Uh, people who have antibodies, so who have caught the virus cannot affect, uh, infect others. Uh, that's what it's believed to be anyway. And then the vaccine is probably 12 to 18 months out at minimum. So we're going to have to plan on this kind of being around for a little while anyway. Hopefully the main economic impacts will pass soon. There's a company, all this data on this economics data it comes from a company called ITR Economics. Um, it's somebody that I, I like getting economic opinions or uh, data from. So it's not me making interpretations or guessing this comes from them and they've been about they claim to be 95 percent correct over the years they call the 08 09 crash uh they certainly didn't call call this but what they believe is you have two issues going on right now you've got the disease coronavirus you also have the oil price war between saudi arabia and russia 
again, we go back to fear, trying to understand the unknown. They actually say the oil price war might have the longer term, the, the greater longer term impact, believe it or not, than COVID-19. Um, the U.S. is close to mediating, if not actually participating in that. So hopefully that won't be a, a major issue. I know all of us are enjoying the lower fuel prices right now. We're getting out there and you're saving a percentage or two on our our fuel cost, which makes a big deal. The problem is, is if uh, all the U.S. producers go out of business, uh, the Saudis just going to jack the price way up and we're all going to be paying $4 a gallon for gas and diesel. So that can be a major, major, major deal, obviously with unemployment uh, from those oil producers as well. Stocks were likely overvalued, which contributed to one of the reasons I'm coming down at least slightly. Who knows if that's the case, but that's what, you know, that's what ITR kind of believes. And then you had a lot of sellers that made a ton of money recently that sold uh, to kind of lock in their gains so they can get their money back into it once it hits bottom. The market's been up two days in a row now. I promise you we're not going to be talking about the stock market a lot now. We are going to get into junk removal. Um, extremely aggressive stimulus response and the Fed action will likely limit the damages. Uh, I don't know what the long-term uh, impact of a $2 trillion stimulus bill will be, but we, you know, it's probably going to help out at least in the short term. We'll talk about that a little bit more once we get into this presentation because part of that $2 trillion is around unemployment. Now this hasn't completely signed yet. There's, there's uh, the Senate was supposed to sign today and hasn't yet, so this could change, but we are gonna talk about the unemployment because those of you that have employees, or even if you don't, that could potentially uh, affect you. How long will it last? When will the economy recover? Again, this is from ITR Economics. Uh, and part of this to understand is like right now, most of this is local governments. So California is under uh, shelter in place or stay at home. Ohio, I believe Michigan, uh, there's like 15 or other states and all that have done that. And then like in North Carolina, where we are, it's being done on a county basis, Durham County and Wake County and Mecklenburg County. So that Charlotte, and Ra the Charlotte and Raleigh areas are under a stay at home order that starts tomorrow, but the rest of the state isn't. So it's very much localized. It could be one area of the country gets out of this sooner than the other. Uh, just to pick kind of depends on, on where you are. Uh, some, some of these areas could lag behind by a few weeks. Um, one piece of data that's good to note is 80 to 90 percent of workers have gone back to work in China after a three-month lockdown. So that is some good information is, is in three months, you know, it's, it's starting to recover decently. And uh, ITR economics predicts a full, a full rebound and full effect by July. That doesn't mean it's going to wait all the way until July to begin on the upswing, but they say by July, unemployment, you know, a lot of people should be back to work. Uh, and the economy, the stock market's on the way back up decently well, and the economy, uh, economy mostly recovered within six months. So that's not a bad scenario. Yeah, we're gonna miss out on a lot of the really, really good months in junk removal, you know, March through, uh, October is extremely busy, so we might, you know, March through June might be significantly down. But I think as people get back to work and the economy goes up, we're going to talk about that in a bit. I think we will see a lot of pinup demand that we guys are going to, everybody's going to need to be ready to uh, keep up with uh, once it occurs, once we get out of this. All right. And the last bit on kind of the economy before we actually roll into the junk removal end of things is on home sales. Um, all of us know that home sales are extremely important for junk removal. And uh, a lot of the people, you're either doing work for somebody that's preparing to sell their home or you're removing boxes and stuff that they decided they didn't want to keep after they got to their new home. So it's a big, big deal. The nice thing is with these record low interest rates, uh, it is expected that home sales will continue fairly steadily. They're probably going to drop some, and they, are, they have dropped some over the last week, but they should pick back up. That's great for junk removal. All right, and as we roll into the junk removal portion of this, everybody understand there will be an email that's gonna be sent off to you uh, after this presentation. They, we've got some forms that you guys uh, can use. There's some good references you can use. There's a cash flow uh, spreadsheet that is an awesome, awesome tool that you should be using kind of throughout the year. Uh, so that will be sent afterwards. And then you also get the slide deck. This presentation is being recorded as well. I'm not gonna email YouTube subscribers and all this, uh, these documents. That's just for the people that came but uh, we will be posting this on YouTube where you guys can rewatch it. So we're gonna address in here, how much work can you get throughout this process? And then once we get out, come out the other side, can you actually operate? That question is beginning to be answered. Uh, how does it affect employees and customer and employee safety, cash flow, 
loans and government assistance, should you apply for it, should you use it? Can I be held liable for an employee or customer getting sick? Uh, what to do with marketing throughout all this? How to prepare for the other side and keep moving forward? And then what to do right now at this very moment is all what we're about to cover. Q&A will be coming up at the end of this section. All right, so how much work? We are, the nice thing with JRA is we talk, you know, we work with a variety of companies throughout the country doing a variety of services. So we get a fairly good feel for what the market's looking like in different areas. Um, we're seeing some variation, but overall, it seems that most people are probably down 25 to 50% of what you would generally be doing in March. Now, areas like Florida and California, sometimes March actually isn't as great of a month as January and February are. But for the most part, 25% to 50% down is what we're seeing. That's what we're seeing with our very own junk removal company, Junk Doctors. So it is a major hit, but uh, it's probably going to be similar to a lot what a lot of people did in February, unless you're an extremely cold client. So that's, uh, that's decent news. At least we're not dead in the, dead in the water at the moment. Uh, the good thing is, and this is what a lot of people have been kind of talking about, is people are at home. And I'm glad I'm not having to be stuck at home for weeks, you know, weeks on end, I drive myself crazy. Uh, and I think a lot of other people will be kind of the same way. The longer they stay home, the more productive they'll want to be, the less fearful they'll be, they will, they will be, as long as there's not something for them to be truly afraid, unless this thing just goes gangbusters crazy on spreading. But most likely, they're going to be less fearful, they're going to want to get stuff done. And we're going to be positioned in a way to be able to take care of that for them, especially if uh, we can offer some of the not, no contact services and all that we're going to be covering in just a minute. Um, if we do go into a long-term recession, junk removal generally takes about a 25% hit. I wish I could find the data, that, uh, the source that I had, had of this, but it was actually Got Junk data. Uh, it was an interview from Brian Scudamore with Got Junk. They took about a 25% hit in 2008, 2009 when the recession hit. Uh, now, that's a big company over a big area. I think at the time they had 200 some franchises and like 50 or 60 of them closed approximately. So they, uh, some of those franchises were probably right on the edge anyway. Um, but the nice thing is that does give us pretty good information. 25% isn't a huge hit. Foreclosures do go up in terms of recessions. If we are going into a long-term event, which I really don't think and a lot of people don't think that we are. Uh, and we do have an older population now than we did in 2000 eight and 2009. The baby boomer, boomers are getting older. They will be downsizing and the reality of the situation is they will be dying and we all do a lot of estate cleanouts and everything. Um, sounds harsh but that, that's the truth, uh, the, you know, the, the truth part of it. So recession is not the end of the world for a junk removal business. Can you operate? And this, those of you that are participate in the Facebook and social media forums, this has been a source of debate is can you actually operate? Are you considered an essential business? And so far, we have gotten confirmation of people that have actually gone through with contacting the local hotline in their area once they went under stay at home order. And they are being classified as sanitation companies, waste management companies, trash removal companies, and they're being given the go ahead that they can continue operating as an essential business. Uh, I don't know if you want to actually pick up the phone and call and ask in your particular area because part of it's probably left up to the interpretation of the person you're talking with. And the issue is, is if you're told no, then, you know, at that point you can't really um, claim that you thought you were or whatever if something does happen down the line. I can't answer that question for you. That's going to be up to you whether you want to make that call or not. However, uh, most areas or all areas are listing waste management or trash collection or sanitary services as an essential service. Uh, and when in disaster areas, when hurricanes hit, I realize it's a bit of a different situation because that generates a lot of debris. But in those cases, you are considered a junk removal business is obviously an essential service in those cases in the areas like Florida and all where that's hit. Homeland Security says this, this just recently came out. Now understand that most of these orders or all these orders are coming from local governments. But I love this quote here. Homeland Security say workers such as plumbers, electricians, exterminators, and other service providers who provide services that are necessary to maintaining the safety, sanitation, and essential operation of residences are considered essential. So I love the sanitation part. I love the essential operations of residences part. Uh, that to me makes me feel fairly certain that we should, everybody should be able to continue operating. Uh, that doesn't mean certain areas might put, certain smaller areas might 
do something differently, but vast majority of places we're seeing, we can continue operating. Landfills, I have heard of one area in particular uh, that I believe is in Minnesota that has, it's a city owned landfill and they have restricted it to commercial haulers only. So if your area requires a commercial hauler permit and you currently do not have one, you need to immediately get that as quick as possible because that could occur. And uh, it's still, since this is a little in the gray area, I mean, we're, walk, we're running around, most of it, a lot of us in flashy trucks, not all, but a lot of us in flashy trucks, bright colors and things like that. And it's not to say that a police officer might not pull you over and, you know, thinking that you're not an essential business. So I, I would recommend printing out, find this Homeland, uh, I think actually the slides we're going to send you, the information I'm going to send you will have a link to this Homeland Security page. I would print out the statement from Homeland Security. I would also print out the statement that comes from your local municipality about waste management and uh, sanitary services being required, being essential. That way you can show that to a police officer. If you guys have employees, make sure you train your employees to do that. And also I would let them know to tell them, uh, the officer, we've been deemed an essential business as we remove garbage. And here's the paperwork for showing that. That'll always help your case. Employees, and, and also any questions you have, uh, we'll cover that at the end. Please uh, keep in mind what they are. That way we can cover them at the end because I do want to get to plenty of questions, but I'll probably answer some of them as we go throughout this. All right, employees, and we're going to cover liability also. Are you liable in, in a slide or two? But on employees, the key thing is, is if you are going to have them work, and if you yourself are going to be work, are working is you need to follow all CDC guidelines. It's all common sense stuff, but you need to make sure your employees are educated around it. It's anyone who's showing any symptoms of being sick should stay home. In North Carolina, we're right in the middle of pollen season. I don't know if you guys have ever been to North Carolina this time of year, but uh, you look outside and there's green fog almost that comes from the pine trees that generate pollen. We also have oak trees and everything else. And people with allergies are sneezing and coughing like crazy right now. And uh, generally, that generates a, a sympathy from uh, people that you're around. But nowadays, they give you the death stare thinking that you're about to infect the whole place. So somebody that has severe, has allergies, hopefully allergy medicine helps. But you're probably not going to want to put that particular person in a person's home if they're sitting there and sneezing and all. E even if they're not sick and it's just allergies, uh, it's going to make customers feel uneasy. So uh, no handshaking. We always shake customers' hands. We're not doing that now. Uh, six foot from the customers if possible. And nitrile gloves, they're a little hard to find right now, but I will tell you, I went ahead and bought my box just in case 50 people rushed out of this to go to Amazon and purchase them. Uh, but they do have some nitrile gloves that should be available, I think it said April 2nd. So um, uh, we are recommending our employees wear nitrile gloves at all times, even if they need to wear work gloves on top of them. That way they can throw it out and it's just extra, extra, extra safe. The customers like seeing that as well. Uh, obviously no touching of the face. This is all common sense stuff. Educate employees, that's gonna be huge. Don't assume employees actually know this stuff. Make sure you're educating them. Put it in writing, send it to them in email, or there is a form that you're being sent where you can actually get them to sign. Uh, that's up to you. Just make sure there's documentation that you actually did educate them on this. It's kind of like workers comp. You need an actual safety plan in place where you're educating them. A link is going uh, or ask customers who feel sick to reschedule. So there'll be a text message that you can send out. I'll show you the template you'll get as well by email. Uh, it'll show your policies on, on what you're doing. You also need to ask customers if they're feeling sick at all, please reschedule the appointment just for our safety as well as yours. Taking employee temperature before work is recommended but not required. We're not doing that with junk doctors. We're considering it. They have those forehead scanners that I think are supposed to be fairly accurate. Um, that is a way of doing it. You just need to make sure the person that's administering the test is not exposing themselves, you know, tries to maintain that six foot separation where they themselves aren't going to be uh, potentially getting infected from a sick employee. This is uh, pretty important. If you guys have multiple crews, stick with the same crews in the same trucks if possible. And then that, because what can happen if you're mixing crews, and you're mixing trucks is if one employee gets sick, it, there's a chance that it spreads to all of your employees. And then before you know it, your company's stuck in a 14 day quarantine where you're not going to be able to operate. So if this is at all possible, try and keep the same employees in the same trucks uh, and don't mix, you know, mix in trucks or mix employees. 
familiarize, this is important to familiarize yourself, those of your employees with the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. I'm not gonna go into all the details on it, but more uh, the, basically if somebody has coronavirus or somebody's family member has coronavirus that's at home that they're taking care of, you're actually responsible for paying up to two thirds of their regular salary for, for up to, I believe it's 12 weeks. Uh, verify that number. Uh, you're, you yourself are responsible for paying that. Now you'll get it all back in form of a tax credit, but the problem is that tax credit's not gonna hit till next year. So when we're right here in the middle of a cash flow crunch, that is a possibility you guys are going to have to you know, be ready for. Um, unemployment, this is not finalized. Unemployment is part of the three uh, today's stimulus package that has yet to have been signed, that was supposed to be, that's supposed to go to the House, uh, is talk, calling for a $600 a week federal unemployment to all unemployed employees on top of your normal state benefits. Your normal state benefits depending on where you are in North Carolina, it's 350. So that means that somebody can actually make up to 950 a month. And here's the crazy thing at the moment, and this is the holdup on why this bill hasn't been signed, is uh, there is not a limit to 100%, is, there's not a limit on the amount, if somebody only makes 30,000 a year or 35,000 a year, they could potentially make whatever this comes to, 48, what's well, equivalent to $48,000 over the next four months. This is extremely important and we'll talk about it as far as what's going to occur and how to prepare for coming out of it because it could be difficult for some of these employees to come back to their job if you give them unemployment uh, when they're gonna be making less money than, sitting, than staying at home drawing unemployment. And it's, we're talking about a four month time frame here. Ho hopefully this isn't uh, four months that this carries on. Now, some, uh, the other part of this is as many states are suspending the deal of where you actually have to be looking for work at the moment. The question is, is are they going to require you to be looking for work and submitting that every week like they normally do on unemployment once we get out of this thing potentially? So that, uh, that could be major, you know, a major deal for us getting people when we're ready, trying to keep up with this increased demand that we're gonna get. Customer service, service. you're still gonna do, like, we're still operating, going into people's homes, most, most companies are, or a lot of companies are that we talk to. There are some companies that all they're doing is non-contact. That's really a personal decision. I can't fault you either way for whatever direction that you go. The way we're operating is we're still going in homes, but we're practicing those CDC guidelines that we talked about. You can offer non-contact service. And this part right here is pretty important because it's happened to us multiple times already um, within, for both junk doctors as well as some of our contact center clients. We're getting calls where people are wanting to cancel appointments and then we're asking them, yeah, sure, I'm happy to mark you off, but can I ask why you're canceling? And it's because of virus concerns. We've actually been able to salvage the majority of those jobs by telling those callers or those customers, I completely understand your concern. If it's at all possible for you to actually get the stuff outside, in, at least in a garage or, or at the driveway, curbside, whatever, uh, then we can actually come out and remove that stuff and you don't have to be you know, exposed at all. We'll actually give you a discount for doing that. We'll give you 10% off for bringing that stuff outside. Believe it or not, we've actually salvaged the majority of the appointments that we've actually told people. Now, there's going to be some people that aren't going to be physically capable of bringing the stuff outside. I think we are going to find a lot more people that are willing to do that work now than would typically do it before all this because, again, they have more time. They're at home. They're less rushed and they're bored uh, in some cases. Send a customer an email or text explaining the steps you're taking to reduce chance of spread. If you guys use House Call Pro, or I'm pretty sure House Call Pro does it, but I know Workies does it. Um, Vonnegut, I believe, does as well. A lot of your common scheduling systems, you can actually uh, schedule automatic text messages once a job books or a reminder email when, you know, the day before or whatever. Uh, have a text message go out explaining the steps that you're taking as far as the CDC requirements, the gloves and the six feet, not shaking hands, that sort of deal, that lets the client know that you're being careful. And that's gonna go a long way on retaining them so they don't cancel, but also uh, just making them feel good about the service and maybe not feeling taken aback if you show up and you don't, don't shake their hands. Some people, you know, it's, it's kind of odd when you, you meet somebody and you don't shake their hand. A lot of people are used to doing that. Um, and then, uh, inside their home, reduce what you touch. You know, try not to touch anything that you don't have to. If you can avoid touching the doorknob, don't touch it. Uh, 
we, it's possible if you could ever get your hands on some disinfectant spray, which is impossible to find at the moment, but if you could, I mean, you could offer to actually wipe down door handles or surfaces that you touch. Just make, obviously make sure you're not gonna damage whatever you're spraying and wiping down. Uh, wipes work excellent, like Clorox wipes work excellent, but you can't find them now. That is another great over the top service that you could provide your clients that'll really wow them. All right, cash flow. Everybody should be doing a monthly rolling cash flow statement. I'm, I'm assuming a lot of people have, and it took us many, many years before we did our first. I'm actually going to send this working template to each of you, which is pretty neat. Uh, you'll, you should keep up with this for every single month, but the reason it's important right now is you need to understand how much cash you currently have and uh, what your current fixed costs are. Eliminate and reduce as many fixed costs as you possibly can without sacrificing business and figure out exactly when you're going to run out of money if this thing gets really bad. Project out, a, kind of project out a worst case scenario and then project out what I think is going to happen, which is going to be about a 50% decrease in what you would normally do in business. Now, remember what you did in February, you're probably going to have, you know, it would probably vastly more than what you're going to be doing uh, uh, the rest of the year. So don't base your 50% off your February numbers. That rolling cash flow is going to be an excellent tool for those of you guys that take the time to do it. So your fixed costs are typically your rent, salaries, your vehicle payments, your variable costs. That changes based on, on how busy you are and the percentage of income typically. Advertising, a lot of times if you're doing pay-per-click, disposal fees, fuel, truck labor, all of that is, uh, is variable cost. As you slow down, that should decrease. The employees, a lot of people we're doing the right thing, which is trying to get employees hours. If this unemployment thing goes through, you're probably, uh, there's a chance that now you have the option of, of laying these guys off and they can go off and make more money and they're probably making it for you now. Just good luck getting them back on the other side. I'm, I'm hoping they limit that to 100%. So how to improve cash flow? And, and guys, uh, this needs to be taken immediately. Some people started this last week. Uh, we started this last week as soon as this became apparent. You don't want to wait until the last moment to, to do some of these things, even if hopefully you don't have to take out a loan. Hopefully you don't have to do any of this kind of stuff. Uh, it's smart to go ahead and jump on it now. Calling vendors to negotiate payment, um, just seeing if, if there's any way they can reduce payment for the next month or two, or if they can maybe extend it out. Uh, we did this with a, we've got a couple, uh, we've got a loan out for some equipment purchases that we did. We picked up the phone, we asked the bank, they said, sure, we'll extend it out 60 days, no problem. You know, we appreciate your business. It never hurts to ask. So your cell phone bill, I don't know what kind of, we're gonna call Verizon and see if we can get that knocked down. Uh, even credit cards, can you guys do interest free? Uh, we've heard Capital One. I've heard of a couple cases of Capital One for small businesses actually saying for the next couple months, they will not be charging interest. So that's, that, that's, that's, that's great customer service on their part. Your landlord, your landlord, if you guys are renting a warehouse, uh, a lot of, there's not very many people in the next month or so that are gonna be going out and renting a warehouse. Now, some people will, but he's not going to want to miss out on that. So if you pick up the phone and let him know, hey, can we get reduced rent or can we hold off on rent? I'll make it up in equal payments over the rest of this time. Always ask, even your insurance. We've called up our automobile insurance company and trying to figure out, can we delay some of these payments if needed? None of this stuff, a lot of this stuff we're not really, we're not really implementing, but we're trying to figure out, can we? And we're basing our cash flow statements on that. So you also want to generate more business. Uh, there's plenty of programs out there where you can send mass text messages to previous clients. It might irritate a few of them, but if you've done a great job for them, they're going to understand the position you're in. You're fighting for your life here and your business. And, um, you know, you'll send, you'll send them out, let them know you're open for business offer them a discount for service if they do service by, until like April 15th. Try and generate that money now. And let them know you can offer no contact services. And like I said, that discount is well. Those of you that do not have a line of credit right now or a high credit card limit, we started the first few years we were in business, we were absolutely debt free. We're very limited debt now. We, we, we've got some newer trucks where we have, uh, we make payments on. But for the most part, we're very, very limited on debt. We've got a high, uh, a high line of credit that is at a zero balance right now. But I called up the bank and I asked if we could get more and they said yes. So we were able to raise that line of credit more just in case we need it. A lot of you guys won't need a huge line of credit. Uh, if you're a, you know, if you're, on, if you got one or two trucks running and a few employees, 
you know, a, a 25,000 line of credit would go a long, long way. Um, and that could be between credit card and your line of credit. Research and take advantage of government assistance for small businesses. So in a lot of areas, the SBA has a disaster relief loan. The terms on that it varies depending on your situation, but it's 3.75% up to 30 years. So it's like a mortgage, it's like a mortgage almost. I don't know if they're giving the 30 years to everybody. Uh, the interest rate I believe is fixed throughout the country. It's $25,000 unsecured. You need no collateral at all. Uh, limit $2 million. I don't imagine there's very many junk removal businesses out there that are going to need to borrow $2 million, but uh, you might be able to secure 50,000, 25,000 or something if you need it. The idea behind this loan is, is it's supposed to, so you can continue paying employees and paying fixed costs so you can stay in business. You can apply for this loan and get accepted and not use it. It's not going to hurt you to do that. So we're, and it might take a couple weeks to actually be approved. Our suggestion is to go out and go ahead and apply for this and you have it as an option. You know, it's, it's there if you need it. Uh, hopefully you don't have to use it. Also check with your local state. North Carolina does have a loan that they came out with small businesses um, that is up to a $50,000. Uh, you can borrow the $50,000 and it's interest free and no payments for six months. Now I haven't looked in to see if they, if, if they give you, if there's like a prepayment penalty but yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's pretty desirable there if it's interest free and no payments for six months. If you can borrow a little bit of money if you need it and pay it all back within six months, it's, you know, kind of like a no brainer there. Uh, those of you that aren't used to debt, just going to have to make sure you don't abuse it there when, when all this is available, obviously though. Uh, and then have you been drawing a salary? You need, you need to double check with your accountant on this, but it is possible if you have to shut down for some reason, if your particular area has to shut down or if you're super slow, you, and you've been, if you've been drawing a regular salary and not just taking dividends, you actually might be able to lay yourself off and get unemployment insurance. Now, before you do that, you need to check with somebody that's not me. You need to check with a local account, accountant in your local area to make sure that you're actually in the good, but that is something to look into. All right, and then what kind of liability do you have if somebody gets sick? And this is a very, very valid concern. And it's a concern that I went to an attorney and actually uh, had him get me some clarification on this. So uh, it might not apply into your area. And obviously this is kind of his opinion from his experience, but it's impossible to determine exactly where a person got this illness because it's so easily spread. If you follow CDC guidelines and if you document that you trained your employees on those CDC guidelines, and if you make sure you're not making somebody that's showing symptoms work, then it is the overall overwhelming opinion that you will not, legal opinion, that you will not be found liable if somebody gets sick, dies, whatever. Uh, there is, and I'm drawing a blank as to what the insurance is. I think it's officer's insurance or something like that, uh, that I have sent an email out to our insurance agent just to inquire about. There is possibly a little bit of liability release there. I don't know if you're gonna be able to actually get it at this point. But what we're seeing is you shouldn't be, is you will not be held liable uh, for it. Okay, so marketing. What kind of marketing should you be doing throughout this? Um, changing up your Google ads. We've run experiments with COVID-19 related Google ads. If you guys are doing PPC and we've seen okay results. In all honesty, it's, it, it hasn't been any better. Uh, a lot of times we're actually converting back to the non COVID-19 advertisements. We just kind of ran a test to see if it would work. What we're finding though is putting something on your site. I listed pop up on here, but at least just making it clear on your website that you are open for business. You're considered essential. Maybe you want to include a discount on there potentially. Maybe you don't, you know, uh, for them to go ahead and schedule by April 15th. That's a good thing to do. Social media blast around being open slash no touch. Uh, I have seen that uh, Joseph Martinez with Vets All Junk has been putting out some posters. I think, not positive, I think Jeff Glass with Alpha Media Group has been doing a few as well that look kind of cool. So, um, and they're fairly cheap. They might be something you want to put out on social media uh, and make available. Yard signs, if you guys are slow, it's a heck of a time to put out yard signs. And chances are a lot of the people that pick those things up and get rid of them from your local town, if it's competitors, they'll still do it but from your local town might not be doing it. So if you guys have time, yard signs, very, very cheap advertising, get them out there. Maybe people will take a picture of it on their phone. If they're not gonna hire you immediately and use you once we get on the other side of this thing. 
Uh, a lot of this is just general marketing that you can be doing year round, but some of you guys are going to find a bit more time on your hands. Nextdoor.com participation is excellent. Uh, Facebook groups, LinkedIn, uh, very, very stay, staying active on, on those social media channels while things are slow is excellent. Network digitally if you can, since we can't really do in person. For our Google, our Google ads clients, we are lowering a lot of their Google ads bids, trying to see if we can maintain a similar position and similar results without, uh, uh, by lowering the bid, the, their bids and lowering their budget. So if we can say, if you guys can save money in any, in any way and on advertising now, without sacrificing results. That's what critical, that's what's critical. You don't want to turn your advertising off now when you're still running because you're just going to completely shut off the, the, you know, the, the pipeline of jobs. But if you can save money in certain areas, it's a good chance to look into, a good time to look into that. Uh, I mentioned text messages already. And this is something else. Can you guys call up your phone if you guys are slow? Call up your, ch call up charities. Let them know you have a truck. Let them know you got team members. Is there any way I can help? They say that you're able to help in some way. Try and get publicity. Call up a local news channel or post something on Facebook anyway, at minimum. See if a blog will cover you that, heck, this is this small business trying to make ends meet, uh, but it's still out there helping out the community. That can be a great way to get some free publicity. Also, if you can get a link back to your website, that'll help out on your SEO. All right. Now, how to prepare for the other side, because no matter what, we are coming out the other side of this thing. We just don't know exactly when and how extended a potential recession will be. But uh, I mentioned already the relationships on LinkedIn uh, and, and other social media channels, trying to form relationships with professional organizers, real estate agents, property management companies. You can do that through LinkedIn. Um, that, this is a great time if you're a little slower to do that. You can consider purchasing another truck. Now, through another entity, we sell trucks, but I'm gonna give you an unbiased opinion on this. I, I would probably wait a few weeks to see exactly where this, uh, you know, let's see how things look. I think in two or three weeks from now, we're going to know a lot more. I don't think there's an advantage to purchasing a truck at this very moment, um, unless you're just looking to get into the business. But the reason I say that is this pinup demand. I don't, I don't think June or July, it's all of a sudden we're going to go crazy. I think it's going to be a little slower than that. Uh, people are going to have to get used to getting back to work. People are going to have to, um, uh, get used, you know, just get their money right. Hopefully the stock market will come back up. Uh, a lot of people's 401ks got annihilated over the last two weeks. And uh, a lot of our customers, that, that's a major, major factor. So once things come back to normalcy, I do anticipate it, it really, 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 really busy, probably August, you know, through really August through December. Uh, and the people that have, the companies that have the capacity with people in trucks, are going to be the ones that are going to be able to get that work and uh, not only look at it as you because because one, one truck is going to get full so it, most likely if you have that extra truck you're also getting that customer who's going to reuse you again later they're going to post a review online and they're going to refer you to others so the lifetime value of having that truck could be extremely beneficial be thinking about it let's see what happens over the next few weeks before you um, actually pull the trigger on that Always a great time to review your processes and training as you guys slow down and then uh, repair trucks. Again, uh, we all know downtime on your vehicles is huge. If you guys have trucks that are a little dinged up here, maybe you can touch them up. If you, maybe it's a good time to do a brake job. Um, you know, do whatever you need to try and get that truck once you are really busy where it's not going to be down. So what to do right now? Just kind of a recap, call vendors and ask about relief. Anybody does not hurt to pick up the phone and ask anybody that you consistently pay money to for some relief. Uh, raise up your credit limits, if at all possible. Apply for, for loans. That does not mean you actually take out the money right now. Don't commit yourself to actually taking out the money at the moment. Just apply, apply for it. That way you can easily get to it if needed. Uh, the SBA loan, I have got the paper documents. We'll get emailed over to you. Uh, they do have an online application, but it's ex operating extremely slow right now. It's overloaded. It's much like the uh, healthcare uh, system was many years ago when they first put that website out, I think. CDC policies uh, communicated to employees and customers. This is very important to do immediately because you do want to relieve yourself of that liability. Ensure, and also, uh, I mean, that's the way to keep from spreading the disease. And obviously, we want to do our part not to spread it because the quicker uh, we can get through this, the better for all of us. Ensure paper click as efficient as possible. 
ensure we have a commercial haulers, ensure you have a commercial haulers license if applicable and keep working, keep working. Don't sit around, just find ways to stay busy uh, throughout all this. So guys, I'm gonna open this up to uh, questions and uh, or a Q and A session right now. Um, you guys, everybody's muted at the moment, so you have to unmute your mic. I just ask if you're not speaking, please keep your mic muted and just unmute your mute, mute your mic for any questions. Hey, uh, Lee, this is Jeff Glass. I don't know if you'd mind if I, I add a couple things to what you're uh, bringing up here. You brought up some great stuff. You're right ahead. You mind, man. I just take a couple minutes here. Um, <clears throat> having built a business through a, re a recession. Uh, this is just my opinion, but you know, working in the field of, of teaching and working closely with economics, I, I really think a recession is inevitable. How big it hits, um, you know, is really yet to be seen. Um, yep. During the time and transition, uh, you know, Brian, uh, you know, from uh, Got Junk um, did go down during that time, but there was other reasons to that other than the recession. He was through a, a change in the structure of his management team. Cameron Harold came in and helped and got some things going. So that dip um, that Brian felt um, might not be the only um, metric out there. Uh, it, what's going to happen, in my opinion, from what I've seen, having built, uh, you know, been through this a couple times, is that you know ups and downs of the economy is your type of clientele is going to shift. You're going to go from Mr. and Mrs. Smith homemaker they're going to shift to uh, property management. So you heard me preach a lot online, you know, go after apartment complexes, property management companies, because these people, uh, as they downside and tighten up their wallets, they might be moving into condos, into apartments. And that's uh, more of a mandated type service rather than a discretionary service. What I mean by that is apartment complexes are now competing with each other. They need to have their own curbside appeal and attracting renters that, are wanting to come in. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Smith just left their 700,000 square foot home or $700,000 home that whatever it's worth, they want to keep that lifestyle to a degree as much as possible. So they're going to come in with very high standards, these apartment complexes. So keeping these properties well kept, clean, uh, you might want to think about how you can legally market your company as a property services type business, incorporating those keywords I'll let you consult on the Google ad side because you're more of an expert there, Lee. Uh, but, you know, as far as SEO, you and I both operate quite a bit in that area, we, you know, but honestly, looking at the words that you're putting out there in your social media, in your marketing, uh, trash removal, property services, uh, senior homes, you got seniors, uh, you know, uh, the baby boomer generation comprised about 40 to 43% of the population. They're getting older. They're going to die. Um, it's sad and we could talk about that another time, but those people, it's real estate to them because a lot of these senior home centers, those rooms rent from, from anywhere from 5,000 to $22,000 a month for a bed. So that they're not raising a lot of eyebrows sometimes as things shift, um, to bring in somebody and get that real estate occupied. Um, I shot over a form to you, Lee, I'll let you vet it, um, verify it. Anything I ever put out online, everyone. Uh, please trust, but verify. I try to do the best on my side, but rules are changing daily. Uh, local government here, uh, we had a really good conference call with local government yesterday. So all the way up to our governor, they don't really understand the stuff that's trickling down. So just CYA, protect yourself the best you can. Uh, if you get pulled over, a lot of arrests are somewhat subjective, meaning it can be up to the officer, their mood. They just watched something on CNN or Fox News. We don't know. Yep. But try to carry that paperwork with you. So, Lee, I'll let you look at that and decide if you want to shoot it out to the group. Um, that came directly from Vice President of Senior Affairs. The source of that was, I think, one of these online um, sources like Go Trashy or Home Advisor. Yep. Um, you know, Go Trashy. Go Trashy dot com, I think, or something to that, like that, to that degree. So, uh, Go Trashy, T R A, uh, you know, S H Y dot com. Um, I think was the source of that form that I sent. I sent it to yourself only. Awesome. Um, and and that, that's it. I just, I think guys, gals, whoever's on the call, I think I'd just be aware that your type of clientele is going to shift as we go into this next ex economic change. So that you're picking up a couch and a mattress is going to be more foreclosures, squatters, uh, places, you know, um, and again, sure. keeping your eye on the ball, these, those apartment complexes. That was it. Good. Um, and 
I, the information that we're emailing over as well will have, it does have uh, some information on the statements and all to give officers because he's 100% correct. Uh, police officers. Russ will come in and he'll drop the F bomb. What you got, Bill? Eight times. You got any other questions, guys? I think you're good, Lee. Go ahead. Okay. Awesome. Lee, uh, hi, Muriel's here. Hey, uh, shoot. About hiring me, should hiring be? Should I keep hiring people, or should I start looking at which ones you know uh, bringing in uh, more productivity and let the ones that aren't bringing in that much, you know, to go? Uh, what, what do you think about that about employees right now? How we are? You're coming in a little broken, but have you slow? Have you are you slowing down? No, I mean we've we've actually been steady. We've been steady. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, the, the job or two a day. Um, okay. This um, week I, I mean, probably wouldn't. I mean, it's like if you're happy with the crew you have now, I probably wouldn't go out and hire additional people because, you know, it could get worse before it gets better. I mean, if you guys start getting extremely busy, then maybe you go out and, and, and hire someone. But at the most part, I would just try and take care of and train and, you know, really reward the people that you have uh, that, are, that are good. And the guys that aren't as good, this might be a good chance, a good convenient chance to no longer have to work with them anymore. Does that answer your question? Sure, yes. Okay. Sounds good, Jaime. All right, we got anything else, guys? Hey, Lee, at Tim in Sacramento. Hey, how you doing? Hey, pretty good. Uh, so the question I have is, is there a certain percentage that you advise on the marketing budget? I know typically 20, 25% is usually what you want to do when you're starting up, uh, do you have any recommendations on that? Yeah, that's so that, and that's an, that's an ultra aggressive advertising method. A lot of people are going to do less than that, but yeah, we, we recommend between 20 to 25% over in your first year, it'll probably come down to around 20% by the end of the first year and then stabilize uh, around 15 to 20 in year two. And they'd be 50, be somewhere around 10 or 15 by year three. That's the growth model that we've seen for a lot of these guys to kind of come in and gain a significant market share. Um, and that's, you know, generally what we're recommending for most people because we've seen success with it. Do you recommend that same model uh, with what's going on right now, going into a recession potentially? Uh, I don't recommend cutting back advertising spend as long as it's still bringing in results. So if you're noticing that the results are getting worse, I do recommend like on the pay-per-click end of things, I would try and reduce bids and see if you can still be getting the same results or, you know, decent results. You got to be as tight as you can right now. But the problem is if you cut off advertising, then you, you know, you're kind of cutting off the hand that feeds you. Agree. Lee, I'm, I'm going to add to that. And I work in marketing, you know, Lee and I work with, you know, some of the same clients and, you know, we're still working with every client, but we're guiding them through day by day. But I mean, even if I was in the marketing industry, I think it's wise to, you know, you're going to, what's going to happen too is, is as this economy shifts, there's going to be people rushing to the junk removal space and there'll be people that come in, come out. We've already seen companies pop up um, just in the last couple of weeks. And uh, so you want to stay out in front, you want to stay relevant but there's a possibility that things are going to get much more competitive. So if you pull back on your marketing, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to have a harder time resuscitating out of this than just, you know, um, you're going to put yourself in the category of like a lot of those out there starting all over. So I would just say, watch it day by day, watch your budget, stay budgeted, cut back like Lee's saying, really watch a lot of your expenses. But when it comes to marketing, be careful because you, you got to stay out there and stay relevant. And there's things that you can do too. If you're at home, you know, work on your YouTube channel, work on your blog, work on things that you can do during this time to work on your business. I've heard a lot of you guys and gals say, well, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. Well, whatever this or that was that you didn't have time for while you, the economy was so fantastic, now's the time. Work on those things because when this does come back and, and the flu don't last forever and when this does come back, you're, there's going to be a high demand in my opinion and from what I've seen in the past. Yeah, I, again, I, I'll go back. The pinup demand is probably not going to be immediate, but I, I think we're going to have one of the craziest falls we've ever had in jump removal in, in a lot of ways. I got a question. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Sean, what you got, man? 
Um, you know, since we, we've we've slowed down uh, quite a lot here recently, but I've been seeing one eight hundred got junks trucks everywhere. It seems like uh, the last week or so around here, where I normally don't see them, or well, at least not not very often. I don't know. Maybe I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know if you, I, I'm not exactly sure why that might be. I mean, unless they have some sort of contract with the city doing some sort of work for them, or I mean, there's no telling uh, why they might still be busy. You could also could just be kind of in a random little. It, it could be back off of so. Okay. Two more seconds. Feel free to talk if you've got questions on that. Everybody will receive an email back. Or an email with all the information that I have. Nate, you're coming through all jumbled over here. Okay. Uh, am I coming through jumbled? Okay. Everybody? That's better. Okay. Um, I think we just need everybody just, it appears we're going to be able to continue to operate as an, as an essential service. That's great news. So if everybody's real smart, we ought to make it through this thing. And I think we're going to be positioned really, really well towards the end of the year to hopefully make up for a lot of what we're going to miss out in these next few months. Appreciate everybody for, for tuning in. Uh, if you could, in the comment section, I always like, I don't do very many of these webinars, but if you would give me a nice, honest rating on a scale of one to 10, how this went, that would be helpful. If you have any suggestions on how we could improve it, that would be fantastic. Uh, and if you think there, if you think this type of stuff is helpful, maybe we'll try doing it related to something other than, other than the coronavirus, maybe once a month or so. Uh, feedback is really, really appreciated. Thanks again for watching. Last chance for any questions. Thank you, Lee. Okay. You well, thank thank you. Thank thanks guys. Appreciate you tuning in. Y'all have a great night. Nice play though, by the way. Thanks, Lee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Adios. Have a good one, man. Where's thanks, the comment? Uh, Where's the comment? Uh where do we comment, uh, Lee? Uh, if you scroll down, uh, move your mouse towards the bottom of the screen. It should say chat. Yeah. Well, no, I meant for the, is that where you want the, where you said leave the comment? Is that where you want? Yeah, if you'll post a comment in there, that'd be fantastic because I, I, that way I can review them. Have a great day, man. All right, thanks.